my goodness. <laughs> he actually has Gracie right now. He's taking her to class. I watched, so <laughs> everything's okay. <laughs> Before I forget, if you are, no, everything's okay. Tim just said we're good, so I'm forgetting that. Hi, guys. I'm Daisy Kirtland. I'm the marriage ministry director here at Canyon View, and I am so excited to be up here. I've been up here. I'm usually, you know, over here, but um, now I'm up here, so I'm so excited um, to be up here, and my friends in the red shirts from the marriage ministry have been up here over there in the lobby and bombarding you with these little cards about marriage ministry. And if you didn't get one of those coming in, I encourage you to get one as you leave today. And if you have one of those, we're going to go over just a little briefly um, before we get going on a message. Just so you know, what about marriage ministry and what we have to offer? We do have um, a relationship builders class which is for couples that are engaged or in a serious relationship. It's on the back of the card. And we have marriage mentors, marriage retreats. Um, the marriage course is also a class for married couples, similar to relationship builders, but they're, it's for married couples. And we also have couples events um, throughout the year. We are having a live conference speaker in the fall you saw during the five-minute countdown. He's a comedian. He's hilarious. Um, biblical proof, um, biblical principles, but delivered in a comedic way. Um, he's absolutely hysterical. And that seems like forever um, because it's not until the fall. Um, but that's what the Laugh Your Way is down at the bottom of this little flyer. So I encourage you to pick one up on the way out you didn't get one yet. So the folks in the red shirts, I have to give them a little kudos tonight. If we didn't have our leaders in marriage ministry, our volunteer leaders, we wouldn't have a marriage ministry. So I have to say thank you to all of you tonight that are here right now. I have to say thank you. So would you give me a round of applause with them? Thank you, you guys. Marriage ministry has been something... Um, passionate for me for many years. I've been on staff for several years, three and a half years, and it's something that's been something in my heart um, because I have seen what a tremendous access it has been in our family to encourage all of our kids in many generations that if you don't have, there's my little one right there, <laughs> if you have a strong marriage unit, it will keep going. Or if you don't have a strong marriage unit, you will see the effects of that as well. And so for me, I have seen both, where if you don't have a strong unit at home as husband and wife, you will see the effects of that in the kids. And that's something that draws me to continue to speak what's in here to make sure that we're doing the best that we can. And while I have been involved in marriage ministry here at Canyon View, I have met several couples that have made me so excited to keep going in the passion that I have for marriages and couples' lives. And so before um, I get further into the message, I would like to introduce you two couples via video. Um, one of them is Tim and Terry, and the other one is John and Stacy. And you're going to hear a little bit about their story and why marriage ministry is important to them and why we continue to have that here at Canyon View. I guess for me it was, I was married before, um, and for me, I never really realized what part was lacking, not only in my previous marriage, but my, I guess my life. Um, and then one day, a good buddy at work said, I bet you, um, by the end of the year, that you'll you have to go to church. So, and I lost the bet. And I don't even remember what the bet was. I mean, I, I, I honestly do not remember what the bet was. And I came the first weekend of December, and this was years ago, where the little kids were doing the bells at Christmas time. And I mean, I've been coming ever since. And then when I met Tim, um, I mean, he had a real strong church background. And then when we finally came together, it was like, I know the big thing for me was, the, the big part was the God. God was missing for me. I think going to church together, praying together, and uh, makes a big difference. 
Because if you have just one person going to church or praying, you're, you're losing. You, you don't have that connection there. So I think that makes a big difference in a marriage on the priority side. It's important to work on it, um, to make it work. Um, because I value Tim. Um, whereas before, I think I was, I think I was, I was probably pretty selfish. I respect him for what he does, for the person that he stands for, for his morals and values. Very much I do. I trust his judgment. I don't really think that we would be sitting next to each other if God wasn't a part of our marriage. I mean, it's, um, I don't think it's something that when you get married, you know, at least it wasn't for us when we got married, we said, okay, from day one, God's going to be a part of our marriage. You know, it's just, it's something that he finds ways um, through circumstances to appear and say, don't forget, you need to put me, you know, at the forefront of your marriage. And he helps to keep you you know, bound together from trials and tribulations, and we've been through illnesses and um, parental divorces and job losses and, you know, un unplanned pregnancies, unwanted miscarriages. Financial difficulties, you know. Moving across the United States and back. I mean, we've seen it all, and we can definitely testify that we would not be sitting here if it wasn't if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, God was the glue to our marriage and we've never once through all of that said, you know, we want it out. We know that God was always in our lives and God would never give up on us. God would never give up on us. It just like makes me so excited. Tim and Terry, the first couple in the video, I met them in Relationship Builders, the class that you take when you're engaged or in a serious relationship. That couple now has been married for a while, and now they're teaching Relationship Builders one-on-one -on -one with other couples. They're seeing the blessings that it is for their own self, but for other couples to teach couples biblical principles how to have a healthy, God-centered marriage. John and Stacy Kelly have gone through some stuff. You heard that from their mouths, right? And they've been, they took the marriage course, the eight-week class for married couples, and you go over certain things like communication, conflict resolution, parents and in-laws, some basic tools. And they've been through stuff, and they see that if they now become leaders and they take the time to give back to other couples to show them the glue you heard from their mouths that made them not want to give up the benefits that it takes for other couples to keep going. If we as married couples know what it takes to keep going and, and, and the secret, the glue that keeps it going, don't take the time to communicate and teach other couples, young, old, I don't care, as young as my little girls over here, we haven't done what we're called to do. So I'm encouraging you to, can, to talk to people. I encourage you, when you're at Starbucks and you see someone struggling, I mean, you never know when God's gonna give you a divine appointment. Talk to them. We know what it takes. It's that full circle moment. If you know what it takes, do it. You don't have to be perfect. Oh, heaven's sakes, don't, you know when he's perfect. Trust me, right, honey? <laughs> Nobody's perfect. <laughs> but we have to keep talking to people. We have to continue that, okay? Now, if you don't know what, what it takes to, to make a good marriage, I'm gonna tell you tonight, okay? But, but if you do, we have to continue that. And so what we have in the, in the marriage ministry, what's on this little card, are opportunities for you to serve. And if you would, are at all interested in serving in the marriage ministry, I would love to talk with you. And if you would sign up in the desk out in the lobby, I know this sounds like a commercial, but this is our opportunity. You heard Kirk. The ministries are gonna have an opportunity. Please take time tonight and do that because I, I, I tell you that you will be blessed beyond belief. Ask any of the couples in the red shirts tonight. 
You don't think you're going to be blessed, but you are by giving to other couples. So you heard the last couple, John and Stacy, talk about all of the trials that they went through as a couple. Illnesses, unplanned pregnancies, unwanted lost miscarriages, financial troubles. That's a lot of our stories right now. But the one thing that kept them going, the glue that kept them together, what was that? You remember what she said? It was God. I want to read to you Isaiah 54.10. This this is it, you guys. If we don't get this, we will never get it. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. What, What this is saying in a nutshell, you guys, is when the tough gets tougher, And when the yuck gets yuckier, like, you know, bad days, God's love, his unfailing love, is never going to go away. Do you know what that is? That's an undeserving gift for us. We, We never, ever deserve the love that he has for us. Ever. I mean, think... Think about who we are and think about how rotten we can be. I mean, I I know I can be rotten. (laughs) I know I have to ask for forgiveness all the time. And I know when it gets tough, it's even harder to be lovable. But he's always loving us. It's a covenant that he's given us. And when it's really, really hard, it's always there. And if we don't get that, half of us, half of us don't get that already. I mean, even in the church, I wish, I so wish I could say that, you know, if you come to church and you, and you dedicate your life to God, you're going to just get it. But we don't because the divorce rate in the church is 50%, just like it is out in the real world. But I, I don't think we truly get this. Otherwise, we wouldn't be getting a divorce. Because what, what it's telling me is that, that if I truly get God's love, if I truly get this undeserving gift of love that God has given me, when I'm just really rotten, then I should be able to give that to my spouse when he's really rotten. Not saying that I don't love him, but he can't be rotten. <laughs> Right? <laughs> None of us are perfect. Is that making sense at all? Let's, re- let's, let's read this again. Isaiah 54, 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Whew. He has compassion on you, and his love will never go away. That is amazing. So Valentine's Day today, you have an undeserved gift of love for you. And that's not just in your married life. That's with your kids. That's with your coworkers. That's in any relationship that you would ever have. You can have this undesired, undeserved love. And sometimes you even, un- you don't desire it, but you can have it. That's amazing. That is amazing. A couple weeks ago, our youngest, Maya, got really, really sick. Fever, cold, congested, couldn't breathe. I mean, just really, really sick. Had to take a couple days off of work. Jeff was working. Um, just, just really challenging week. Have one of those days where you just, one of those weeks. I mean, it was stretched out. Well, I have, I have to confess, I'm not the most lovey-dovey, compassionate, um, huggy, touchy type of person. So, so when, when we have a sick one, of course I want to nurture and love and hold and do all those things I know I have to do. But by day three, <sighs> okay, Kale over here is laughing because she knows me. She knows it took 
everything in my being to say, of course mommy will hold you and love on you. And we were in my bed for four days straight watching Barbie movies, huh honey? Barbie movies all day long. And I tell you, I wasn't that pleasant to be around. <laughs> Jeff would you know, tell me that. Okay, but you know what? God was still there for me, and he was still loving me through that, and Jeff was still loving me through that. He did, by accident, ask me why I wasn't real happy. <laughs> and I did tell him. <laughs> but I did ask for forgiveness after that one. <laughs> okay. Let's look to, the, okay, see, point number one, I want you to write this down. You've got, we've got to get this, is that undeserving, or undes, yeah, undeserving gift. We've got to get that, that undeserving gift. Because we don't deserve it. We're yucky, rotten people. I mean, seriously. I was nasty <laughs> to Jeff. I was not kind. I was giving all my attention to Maya because she needed me. But I had to give it to Maya, she was so sick. But he loved me anyway. And the only way he could love me was through God's love, all right? Luke 10, 27. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Anyone here have a neighbor that's a little bit harder to love than other neighbors? I saw a couple little hands. Okay, okay. I got, I got a little neighbor that is a little harder to love than some. And it happened to be the week that Maya was sick that his dogs were barking all night, literally all night long. So you put on top of Maya being sick all night, which was hard, and then dogs barking all night, I, I seriously even text the neighbor to ask him, is everything okay? <laughs> Do you hear your dogs barking? <laughs> you okay? <laughs> and it doesn't say I have to like my neighbor, but it does say I have to love my neighbor, right? So how am I supposed to love my neighbor? That's what you have to go back to Isaiah 54. When it's tough and yucky, I have to learn how to love my neighbor the way that God loves me. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Honestly, I, I personally am not gonna be able to do it. The next scripture I'd like to share with you is Luke 6, 27, 28. But I tell you, hear me. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. This is probably the hardest scripture. She says to love your enemies. But then again, you guys, it doesn't say you have to like them, right? Right? But you gotta love them. So where, where are we gonna learn this love? Where are we gonna learn how to do this? Think about, think about the, how we learn how to love in this world. I was trying to think about how I learned how to love and I, I was remembered when I was a teenager and I'd buy those magazines on the racks and they'd have all these tests about, you know, circle this or fill in this dot on how to, how you figured out how to love. These girls are laughing because they just took those tests. And, and like in, you know, those teeny bopper movies, you know, those magazines, right? Right? That's not real love. Okay, and then even in some of our, in our marriage classes, we take these love language tests. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Okay, that's how you learn how you feel loved. But, but what is real love? The Bible tells us God is love. And if we don't truly know who God is, how are we gonna love our neighbor when his dogs are barking all night and I have a sick child to take care of the next day? And how am I gonna love my husband when he's being a little snothead? I mean, how, seriously, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this marriage thing? Well, my daughter liked that one. How are we gonna do this marriage thing when half of us are given up 
I mean, serious. We have got to figure this God thing out in this undeserving gift of love or we're not going to be able to do it. I have another confession to make. That week that uh, I was being a little special with Maya, Jeff wasn't too friendly either. And he gets this little sparkle in his eye. <laughs> and we were saying goodnight. And I said, honey, I love you, but I don't like you right now. <laughs> but we have to remember, it doesn't say like, but we have to love our enemies. Right? <laughs> and we have to pray for those who curse you. And we have to pray for those who mistreat you. So we have to keep it together. And what keeps us together is God. And we have to remember that because it will get tough. I promise you. Six, Luke 6, 31, do to others as you would have do to them. This is like the golden rule, the golden rule. Think of your kids. Think of the, like the ultimate thing that you would teach your kids like at school. If they were having a tough day at school and their, their, their best friend ought to, just kind of turned on them and they're being, they're being rotten to them, do you, do you teach them to be rotten back to them? Yeah, no. No, Bob, no. You teach him to be nice back, right? <laughs> no, Bob, be nice to Tamar. You have to be nice back to him. If they're not, if they're not being nice back, you have, to, you have to teach them to be nice back. That's what it says. I didn't make that up. That's in here. Jesus said that. So even if he's being ornery, you still have to be nice back. But can you imagine if we just if we kept going? If we kept getting nasty and nastier and nastier and nastier, that would be a really fun house to be in, wouldn't it? Yeah? But what would happen if we were, if we were being nice to each other and then the next one was trying to be nicer to each other and the next one was trying to be nicer to the next one? That would be a very cool house to be at. I would want to be in that house. I have a couple of some friends that I want to introduce to you. Todd and Candace Talkington, you guys can come on up. They have a unique story that I want to share with you. They're going to share with you. And they've done it one way and they've done it another way. So I'm gonna turn it over to them. And um, they are also involved in marriage ministry. I didn't make them wear the red shirt today. But they uh, met them in relationship builders and now they are involved in the marriage course. And they are leaders in the marriage course. And they've also done some mentoring for us as well. And they've actually taught relationship builders as well. They've pretty much done everything. So um, I'm turning it over to you guys. And we loved every minute of it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, well, so, good evening, yeah. Yeah, welcome. I, I'm so excited to see this many people here on Valentine's Day. I was thinking, you know, this would be cool because there won't be very many people. This would be our practice run. But, um, but there's a lot of people here. So, um, again, I'm Candace Talkington. And I'm Todd Talkington. Um, we will just kind of briefly tell you about our story and uh, why Daisy asked us to come up here and share it with you because we hope that by sharing this, it'll be an inspiration to either you or somebody that you, maybe you'll know. Um, in 1991, Todd and I were married. Uh, I was 18, and he was 22. We met, and we uh, knew each I other. had a lot more hair then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of sick tonight, so bear with me, folks. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was one of those situations we met. Ten months later, you know, we were married, and it was kind of like, hey, let's get married before our parents talk us out of it. And um, so we had this really pathetic wedding. And, um, pathetic, it was great. <laughs> it was pathetic. And um, by a, we were married by a preacher we didn't know. Um, we, uh, you know, our parents came and, and a couple other people. But really it was just kind of like, let's, let's, you know, get married so we can live together kind of thing is really what it was about. And um, so we were cooking along. We had two children we, um, who are now uh, almost 16 and almost 13, Caleb and Tyler. Um, great babysitters, by the way, I hear. They were awesome. And uh, uh, about 10 years into the marriage, we really felt like, you know, things are going down the wrong road. Yeah, I mean, I, from a guy's perspective, I thought that 
marriage was great. I made it 10 years. We're doing great. I'm, I've got the job. I've, I've got the dog at home. I've got the wife and the kids, the car. Everything's good. That's how marriage is supposed to be, right? That's, yeah. that's marriage. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> um, so things were, so we decided, you know, we separated for about a month, and we decided in, in that time, let's get some counseling. So we went to a counselor, and she was interesting. Um, basically, the message we got was, Candace, um, you really need to do what you need to do to make you happy. I mean, really, you have to think about yourself first. And, and Todd, you need to find out what's best for you, and you need to not be around Candace because she really brings you down. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm paying money for this? Right. It's not so, what I want. No, so what we, did, what we got out of it was um, a good laugh. And so we got back together because we realized that that was one thing that we had in common. So she really helped us get to back together, probably not the way that we intended, but that's okay. Um, so about four years later, basically because we hadn't dealt with any of the issues, and as you'll hear in a minute, we were still missing the main element. So we got back together and we're cooking along and having all kinds of financial troubles and, you know, still just trying to plug along, but everything else just kind of seemed to cave in on us and all the issues that was bothering us the first 10 years just came back in droves. And thinking about it, I, I didn't really think about it. I didn't think there was anything wrong. I thought it was, this is how it's supposed to be. Everything's good. I'm going to have a wife that's grouchy every now and then. Come home. She's not happy. Sorry. Whatever. I didn't paint the house. I apologize. But it goes a little deeper now. Right. So uh, after about four years after the separation, um, things just got bad, so bad. And I asked Todd for a divorce. Um, it, for him, it hit him like a ton of bricks. I didn't think it would ever happen. It was like, are you kidding me? What are you? No, this is just one of your ways of wanting <clears throat> up on me on a fight. You're trying to get one ahead of me. And, and I you was bring up the D word. And I was trying to figure out how is this such a surprise to him? Because to me, I was feeling like I was standing in front of him, waving my arms and screaming and yelling, "This isn't right. Nothing's right." And you know, we were speaking two totally different languages, completely. Uh, she, different she'll languages. wake up tomorrow morning feeling completely different. This is just a joke. It, it's, it wasn't a joke. <laughs> no, it wasn't a joke. And so we were divorced. So, um, but during that time uh, that we were divorced, you know, we, we shared two children, so we saw each other a lot, and we knew that there was love still there. We, we never lost that love for each other. Um, and so, knowing that something was missing in my heart, I really felt like, you know what, I, I'm on my knees, and when you're on your knees, that's when you hear God speaking the loudest. And I heard it loud and clear. And so I started going to church, and I really started to hear the word. And as the more I heard of God's word, the more that came out of that Bible that I heard, the more I realized how selfish I was, how arrogant I was, and how much I missed my husband. And I missed the marriage that we had. And I felt the same way because I was, I mean, I, I believed in God did the church thing. I thought that's what you're supposed to do. I didn't walk the path. And I just brought me to my knees at this point when we're divorced. I mean, I was alone. It was the darkest time of my life. And, and God just opened up a door to this place. I mean, I didn't know anything about Canyon View Vineyard. It just, when, you, when you're at that point in your life and you say, Lord, open the door for me. I, I want to see the direction that I need to go to get my life back on track brought me here, and all the wonderful blessings that are here, the people, Daisy, marriage ministry. And when, you know, when Todd and I were really serious, we were really serious, we, we talked about it, let's, let's talk about getting back together. But when we get back together, we've got to do everything right that we did wrong the first time. So we, we made our relationship the priority. We put, back, we put aside all that other stuff that you can put in front, the job, the the activities, the this, the that, whatever. Our, we knew that if we were going to do this, we had to go both feet in, and we had to make it a priority. And once we did that, and I'll tell you what, Todd and I prayed together for the first time in our life, the first time in our life. And as soon as we did that, God rolled out the red carpet. And I'll tell you what, we heard about this little church down the road called Canyon View Vineyard. Little? <laughs> out of your mind <laughs> little chapel um and we we heard about you know some classes that they might have and i'll be darned if we didn't show up we showed up the first week relationship builders was starting the next week we signed up 
Um, even though uh, that was, you know, at that time, that was the only marriage class that they had.